that's my tribe. And I know it's nobody in here right now, but for those who are watching this later, this video is going to be over me. Just pretty much explaining to you guys that, yes, I finally passed my first assist exam. And I just wanted to let you know how I did it, the way that I went through getting my surgical tech first assist certification is no longer available. So I went to the military when I got out of high school and I went through a, uh, I was a hospital corpsman and then as a hospital corpsman, I was allowed to go to a specialty C school. And in that C school, it was surgical technology. While you're in the military, they train you, they used to, I don't know, I've been out for a while, but they used to train you as a surgical tech and as a first assistant. So you didn't just work as a surgical tech. So you still was um, able to close patients and just do a lot more. So when I got out of the military, I started working as a surgical tech and I realized that some of the stuff that I had been taught in the military, I wasn't allowed to do when I got out because of the um, scope of practice rules and everything. And so I went and got my surgical tech certification because I didn't have it when I was in the military. It wasn't really required. It wasn't required. We could have took it, but it wasn't like necessary. And so I got my surgical tech certification, my CST, and then I worked as a CST for a couple of years. And then I started, you know, meeting different physicians and surgeons. They would let me do a little more. And I was explaining to them, you know, I had already knew how to do this because that's part of the training in the military. And then I, I can't remember who it was or how it came about. It was pretty much like, well, why don't you get certified so you can actually get um, compensated for this, this skill set. And so I started looking into it and what was required from the NBSTSA organization was for me to do an additional 200, I think it was 200 or 250 um, cases as well as uh, pass the surgical tech or uh, surgical first assist exam. And it was at the time you could either have already been a CST for a couple years or you could have had prior military experience. And then with either of those path with either of those pathways, you was uh, allowed to sit for the surgical first assist exam. And so I was already a CST and I had the military uh, background, the military training. So I applied and I was approved like the last month that they were allowing that pathway to even be an option. And so I started working on my 200. Um, I started working on my 200 uh, cases after I got approved uh, to sit for the exam. So once they said, yes, you qualify, then I started working on doing the 200. I want to say it's 200. It could have been 250 um, cases. I got my case, my case log in there because I kept it or whatever. But, so I started working on that. It took me a while. It took me probably, I don't know how long. It took me maybe like two years, a year or two to kind of get enough cases to do all of the cases because I was working at the same time. So it took me like a year or so to get all of the 200 and something cases done. So once I got the cases done, then I submitted them, submitted the cases to the National Board of Surgical Tech and Surgical Assistance. And at that point, then you're allowed to, to um, sit for the exam. So you first apply to the program to apply for the um, to see if you can even or if you're even eligible to sit for the exam. Once you get approved to sit for it, then you still have to do the 200 cases. So you do the 200 cases. Once the cases have been complete, then you can go and sit for the exam. So this process has been a really long process for me, you guys. It's, it's taken me, I'm gonna say close to three years, maybe almost three and a half years to get everything that everything done. That's from cases. And then once I got the cases done, like I say, um, you submit the, the paperwork, you submit your um, case law, they approve them or whatever. And then they say, okay, now you can sit for the exam. So this is where it came, a little, became a little difficult for me because I hadn't been in school and at this point I wasn't using a curriculum. So the first time I took the exam, I took it based off of like me thinking I knew, you know, the information enough to test on it. And so I tested, I failed it. And then um, I think I went back and took it like a year later and I failed it again. And so at that point I realized, 
outside. I thought somebody was outside. At that point, I realized that I didn't know what to study. Even though you have the outline, like they give you the MBS TSA curriculum um, or exam outline, they do give it to you on the website, but I wasn't studying the correct information clearly because I wasn't passing it. And so I took the exam a total of four times. Right, you guys, I took it four times. And I'm going to tell you, it would have been better for me to have actually went through a surgical first assist program than how I actually end up doing it. Because it's so much information, and if you're not studying the right information, even though you're studying, you're still going to get, you're not going to pass the exam. And so I took it the first, I want to say I took it like three years ago for the first time, maybe, or two years ago. Because it wasn't last year, it was the year before last that I took it for the first time. So about two and a half years ago, I took it the first time. And then I took it again, like a year later. And then I took it again, not last year, because they did something with COVID. Like last year, they stopped testing, so I couldn't take it last year. Um, but I was able to take it this year. So I took it this year, earlier this year, and I failed it again. And so this was actually my last time being able to take the exam. And so I took it on December 5th and I passed it, but it was so much, I was so stressed out you guys because I took it from home because they let you do the distance, they let you do it from home now. So I, I had everything set up. I had taken, I think at least two or one other one at home, maybe two. I had taken them at home already, so I knew what to do. But for some reason, this time it wasn't um, going as going is, um, smooth. Hold on, I thought I had a comment, but maybe not. And so um, when I logged in, like how their software is set up, you have to pretty much log in and you download this um, software to your computer. And the software lets them, let the proctor know, you know, if it's anything running in your background and stuff like that. And it kept telling me that it was stuff running in my background, you guys. It took me an hour to even get logged in and set up. And they tell you to log in 30 minutes prior. So I had logged in 30 minutes prior. I think somebody's commenting, but... Oh, hey, Tasha. I can't see my text. Yes, girl. I finally passed. It took so long. Oh, my God. But it was worth it. I can't see the um comments. What happened? Um, live chat. Let me see if it'll do it. I don't know why it's not letting me see the comments, but yes, girl. I'm super happy about it. So it took me like an hour to even get logged in. So I was like a whole hour. It took an hour and a half, right? So I logged in 30 minutes early because it was at eight o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. So I logged in early. And then I couldn't get logged in for some reason. Kept the soft, their software kept saying that it was something running in my background. I couldn't figure out how to uh, close whatever it was. Um, I did the control, alt, delete, and everything. I even restarted the computer a couple of times. I switched um, from my my laptop. Like it's two different laptops in here. I ended up having to pull up my desktop and even then the software was still saying that it was something running in the background but it, everything was closed on my end and so that took a whole hour and a half you guys now i don't know how y'all are when it come down to taking exams or tests um but i get a little bit a little bit of anxiety i get a little anxious so by this point like i'm in here my stomach and nuts i'm like oh my god i'm gonna forget I'm thinking in my head that i'm gonna forget the answers to the exam because i'm spending so much time trying to get logged in to the um, exam to even take the test that, you know, I was just, it was a whole mess. And so then I was worried they wasn't gonna let me take the exam. And I was just panicking, you guys. It was just not, it was just not good. And so I finally got in and I started the exam and I was like, okay. And what I will say is this time, I felt way more um, prepared as well as knowledgeable on the, um, the content on the on the um, curriculum and so what I did a little bit different this time than what I had done before so I used to use I was using the app because um MBS TSA had a surgical tech app and a surgical first assist app where they gave you questions um and then you could just retake the exam 
or we take the practice test as many times as you want to. They would switch it up and then you could, they gave the explanation. So what I would do is I would study the, is, um, the, the explanations pretty much. And so now the MBSTSA surgical first assist, uh, app study guide app is not available. Even, even though I had it on my phone, like I could use it sometimes, but because it's not supported by whoever po pocket protect or pro something like that, if whoever is, um, whoever created the app for them aren't supporting the app anymore. And so it was like a hit and miss when I could actually get the app to um, come up. Like you could, I would have to close it and open it and close it and open it. And so I got tired of doing that. So I went ahead and repurchased the practice exam from the MBS TSA website because they have a practice exam that you can take. You take it one time, it's $40, and then you just pretty much see what you got wrong. So I took that and of course I failed it. When I took it, I got like a seven a sixty-three or something on it. And this was like a month before um I was gonna sit for this exam. I'm like, dang, I failed the practice exam. So then I just started studying the practice exam, the explanations and what I got wrong. And then I used the I'll show you one of the books. I used this book, thank you for the thumbs up. I use the Barry and Khan Operating Room Technique um, book. I also use the Alexander's Patient Care, something like that, the surgery of the patient care surgery, or something like that. I can't remember the name of it, but that one I have on ebook. And I have the um other, I have it in textbook as well, but they came up with a new edition, so I actually just bought. The new edition, but I bought it in ebook form instead of buying it in like the the textbook form. So I use both of those to as a reference to go and learn like what I didn't know. I also used Google, like Google was my friend. Me and Google and Google Images was like because sometimes the book would have it, but maybe I want to see. Uh, like I remember I was looking for. I think it was something with the anatomy of the aorta in addition to how the stomach was uh, in relation to it or something. It was something I was looking for and I couldn't find it in neither book. And so I just went to Google and Google pretty much gave me what I was looking for. And you guys, I was studying for like hours every day. I was studying for like, so for a month because I was studying prior, but I wasn't really like, it wasn't the primary focus for today. So when I would get to it, I would get to it. But for like a month, I decided that I was just gonna only focus on studying. And I was gonna at least do two hours or more of studying every day around the stuff that I knew was on like the, the practice exam and not the questions. Like I didn't necessarily study the questions, but more like what the questions was asking me. So if it asked about, um, which one of these are a high level disinfectant i wouldn't just study okay glutilda hide how you say that word is a high level disinfectant i study all the disinfectants like the different levels of them so i would understand what is you know or at least have the option to do process of elimination when it comes down to taking those or choosing the questions because it's multiple choice multiple choice so you already know Two of the questions gonna be completely wrong, and then one gonna be kind of right, and then the other one is correct. And so, if you don't know any of it, if you don't know what a high level disinfectant is, or if you don't know where the can canculus, I think I said it right. If you don't know what that is, and it's asking you about which one of these casts, because that was like something that was on a practice exam. It was like which cast is for a. Um, I think it's called an ocanulin. I don't know how to say it, but it's the elbow, the elbow bone. And it was asking which, this is on the practice now, which cast was for a fracture of the elbow bone, but it didn't call it the elbow bone. I think it's called an ocanulin. I don't remember what it's called, but anyways, if you, it's like old something, but anyways, you can go look it up. And if you don't know the name of the bone or the landmarks or the structures on the bone then you can't say if it's a long arm cast a short arm cast or long leg if you don't know where that that particular landmark or that bone or structure is on the body you don't you won't know how to either use the cast or what tools and equipment so it was really it was a lot um 
to to learn but you know luckily some of it i already knew just from being in the operating room but i didn't know the textbook part of it so i had to do a lot of you know studying so i would say well at this point you can't go you can't become a first assist through those pathways anymore so it doesn't matter how long you was a cst and it doesn't matter if you was prior military or not now you have to go get uh some additional education through I know um, Meridian, I think is the name of one of the colleges. Uh, West Virginia has one. Y'all can't see no. Oh, yes. There you go. There you go. Oh, Cranian. Yeah, that's it. I'll be, I'll be messing up my words. <laughs> no, you got it right. Yes. Oh, Cranian. Yeah. So if you don't know what an old Cranian is, then you can't say if it's a long form, a long arm cast or a short arm cast. So all of the anatomy is necessary. I had to know, um, just remembering what was on my exam, definitely know the crane, the cranial nerves, the crane, um, the, uh, the, oh my God, I'm getting tongue tied because I wanted to call it a little fort, but the different fractures in the face. So if you don't know what bone, if you don't know the um, anatomy of the head and the skull, then you won't know the Lafort uh, categories because they basically are like certain landmarks and bones. If you break this bone, when you get a fracture here, then this is like a Lafort one. But if it goes like under the occipital bone, then that's a Lafort two. And then if you're like, if you don't know where these structures are, like the exam is going to be overwhelming. Um, a lot of the circulatory system was on. The exam as far as the aorta and well not so much the aorta itself but just the um landmarks that come off the aorta so like the superior mesenteric um arteries and the gastric arteries and all of those like all that's on there like all of that's on there the popliteal um so you need to know what a femoral popliteal bypass you got to know all of that stuff like all of that is required so when i was studying like what I did, what I remember telling myself was this time was to make sure I understood medical terminology because if you get the medical terminology, then you can figure out kind of what it is. But if you don't know the anatomy, then it doesn't matter what the medical terminology is because you can't, you don't know where that structure is on the body. So all of that was required. Um, I did have some sterilization on this exam, which I was kind of, not so much like autoclave, but it was asking, um, a lot about the bacteria. Hold on, I can't see. Thanks for all your videos, infos you put out. You appreciate it. Thank you, Ricky. <laughs> I appreciate you. You appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I wasn't gonna make a video, but I had I talked to a couple people and they was like, no, you need to make a video, to talk about it. But then I was like, I'll just go live because I like going live more anyways. But I know everybody at work, so I'm like, I should have went this afternoon, but I have a ton of things going on by this evening. So I just wanted to go ahead and let you guys know that I did pass. So I am officially a certified surgical. So I feel very accomplished, y'all. But I'm going to just tell you, it was hard. Like, it wasn't nothing to sleep on. And so I would have done better had I been in a structured um, class, like going to school and having the curriculum pretty much laid out for me. V, I don't know what that is. Um, Alicia Tech V R, I don't know what that is. Try, um, can you read type it because I don't know what that is, Miss Clark. But yeah, um, I would have done way better, and I'll tell anybody, you know, just go through the course because I took it four times, so that's what three, six, nine, twelve. That's twelve hundred dollars that I spent on exams. And if had I took a course, it probably would have been around. I know here at, um, sorry guys, I got all kind of text messages coming in. I know here in Florida, there's Gulf Coast State College and it's a community college. And so I'm not sure how much the course is there, but I spent about $1,200, but it took me a long time, like on top of doing the clinical part of it, because I still had to do the additional 200 and some cases, like I was telling you earlier. So when you go through a course, you're going to do the curriculum and they're going to give it to you in a structured way and they're probably going to have practice tests that's something that you definitely need to utilize if you can get a practice exam and these books and these books they have questions at the end of 
the chapters, take the question. Like you might not want to study it or you might not want to do the questions at the end of the chapter, but I'm going to say do it because at least at that point, I'm trying to find you when what I'm talking about, but at least if you can study the, um, the questions, then you will have a better idea of, I'm trying to see if it's in this book. It might be in my, it might be in the Alexander's book. Sorry for shaking the camera, but study the questions because then you will know what you don't know. And then you go study what you don't know. And then at that point, you know, when you go back, you just have to review some of the stuff and it'll stick a little bit better. So do as many practice exams as you can. I know for surgical tech that Pearson view or Pearson, there's a surgical tech review book i think it's from pearson i can't remember the name of it but i know a couple people has used that and they have a lot of questions in them so maybe if you're taking the first assist exam just because this is the first a lot of the stuff that was on my exam were things that i knew from being a surgical tech so i'm sure there is some overlap in there so just get if you are if you're thinking about becoming a first assistant get something that's going to have a whole bunch of questions on anatomy and medical terminology once you get the anatomy done how oh, my phone's gonna go dead so we're gonna wrap this up but once you get the anatomy and the medical terminology down the rest of it is gonna be kind of easy you do need to know um different casts different instruments um you need to know about the um, wound vac you need to know about <sighs> Shoot. Oh, even um, wound care, like how, like the different levels of infection, all of that's on there. The bacteria was on there. I remember. Oh, me pharmacology was on there. Like, um, yeah, I. It was like, what was the onset? You need to know the onsets and the durations of. I'm gonna say the lo local anesthesia because I didn't really. It didn't really go into like detail about other at least on the practice exam but i did study the local because that was on the practice exam and the duration and the onset because i remember that from another exam that i had took prior that, that it was a on it was a question on there and so you study those um yeah it was so much stuff on there i just i just can't even i'm gonna tell you sir, um sterilization anatomy Oh, it was some of the laws on there, like, you know, what's male practice? Not so much what was male practice, but you need to know male practice, male appearance. It's a couple of different laws and rules that you probably should know just to know um, the temperature that the autoclaves work at. That kind of stuff was on my first assist exam as well. And so if you don't really know a lot about surgical tech or if you haven't taken a surgical tech exam, then this is going to be even harder. So, but if you go to a course, like I said, they're going to probably break it down a little bit better and it won't take as long for you to pass the exam. But I took it four times. It's not three times. You know how they say like the third time is trying. It took me four times to pass it. And I, the first cup, like maybe a year ago or two, I should have studied more, but I was, um, I was on contracts then and I really wasn't studying. I was just kind of studying here and there. But when I came home, or last year we couldn't take it because of COVID, like I said, but this year I took it earlier this year and I missed it by, you needed a 97 and I had a 95. So that was like devastating because I'm like, are you kidding me? Like that's one question probably. And I have to do this all over again. And so I did it and it was, it's worth it in the end. Do I know what I'm gonna do next? I don't know yet if I'm gonna go back, um, I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm gonna take a contract. I'm thinking about it, but we'll see how that go because that'll be kind of fun, you know. I'm not really in the position to say that I would take a local job because I know, you know, they're not really paying it, but they're not paying that much here. But that's not the only problem. I don't want to be taxed that at that type of rate because if I'm making, you know, however much, even if it's more, if it's hourly and it's taxed, then to me they're gonna the more money you make the more they tax you so i would prefer if i go back to work to go work as a traveler a contractor because the tax is, is different or um if i don't go with another agency then just becoming my own agency and so that's that's something that i'm playing with right now we're gonna see how that go if i do go it won't be until next year and i'll definitely keep you guys 
post it on, you know, if I go with an agency or if I just end up doing it, um, you know, doing it for myself. But yeah, so yeah, you guys. I don't know. I'm excited a little bit. I was really excited that day. Like I screamed. My son, my son and my dog got scared. So I was in the house like screaming. I was so excited because I was so anxious and nervous. And yeah, it was it was so stressful. Thank you so much, Ricky. I really appreciate it. It was extremely stressful. Um, and then once you fail something, you know, like in my head, I was like, I can do this. Like I knew I could pass it. But it was I was going to have to go back to school because I just wasn't studying the correct material. I wasn't studying it right. I was either studying too much of something. So I will say the Alexander's patient care book. I don't I think I'm saying it right. It's so much more for nurses. It's more for nurses. So some of the stuff is relevant, but I would suggest going through the index uh the, yeah the index like the table of contents i mean i would suggest going through the table of content and trying to pick the cat pick the um chapters that relate to surgical tests so anatomy uh pharmacology like in this one this one is way more for surgical tests and first assistance even though this book says well it says operating room techniques so it's, it's going to be good. This is a good book for first assist. They give you all type of information on here. They don't really have a lot of quizzes, though. Uh, but there are some questions. But that other book, the Alexander Patient Care Book, has tons of quizzes. I have other books in here that has um, some anatomy stuff on it. And so every now and then, I would look in those books just to go a little more in detail. Or maybe this book might may not have had exactly what I was looking for. But compared to the Alexander's patient care book, this is way more beneficial, I think, for surgical tests and surgical first assistance because it's not so much about patient care. Like we need you need to know more about anatomy and pharmacology. And then what else is in here? Like they even have a chapter. Yeah, see this one even has the legal regulatory and ethics chapter um suturing and things like that so i would i'm gonna have to wrap this up because i only got like five percent uh -oh, five percent left but i just wanted to come hop in and let you guys know that i always say you should do a video on the books which chapters is needed for first assist definitely we'll do that definitely we'll do that because that is going to be extremely helpful um to anybody and these books is gonna be good for i'm gonna say surgical the surgical tech exam as well as the surgical first assist exam i do apologize you guys that i have to wrap this up it was 30 minutes i was thinking i was only gonna be here for like 10 because i was like everybody gonna be at work ain't nobody gonna be on talking to me but i would definitely do that ricky um because it was helpful to me and you know just yeah i'm just here to share so Y'all bear with me. I'm back a little bit. I know I was gone. Um, I got a couple of text minutes, phone calls, like what's going on. But I was studying. I was like, I'm gonna pass this exam. I'm like, um, I'm, I'm passing this exam. So whatever I need to do, if I need to put my phone on airplane mode, I put my phone on airplane mode. You guys don't talk to me, don't ask me no questions. And I would have to get up a little bit earlier because my son, I homeschool him. So when he get up, you know, I'm in mommy mode and then he's gonna be asking me a billion and two questions. So you got to know how your life set up. So sometimes I would get up at like 6, 30, 7, you know, and just start reading and studying. And so it is going to be a little bit of a sacrifice, but I promise you, I felt way better this time taking the exam because I was more prepared and I felt like I studied, you know, the right stuff this time. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to you guys on the material that I used. I just want to let you know, you know, how I became a first assist and it's hard. And so now... You got to go back to school. So like I was saying earlier, I'm, I'm going to try to say this before the phone shuts off, but you do have to go to a school. And one of the schools is Meridian, I think, and that one's online. And then um, Gulf Coast State College. And then I think I've seen one in West Virginia. But you got to be careful when you start talking about community colleges versus private colleges. If y'all seen any of my other videos, you already know I'm a community college advocate because it's cheaper and 
we not trying to be spending all this money, but I will say I should have taken a course. And depending on how much the course is, you might want to just hop in and do it online. I think Meridian, you can do online, but then you got to meet wherever they're going to meet at to do like a week worth of um, clinicals with them and something like that. And so you have to kind of weigh your options, but doing it where you're teaching yourself the, um, even though I had the curriculum, um, you, you can get the curriculum, you can get the uh, outline, and stuff online as well from MBSTSA you can get the outline and then AST has the curriculum on their website for surgical tech and first assistant but I would say if you I would if I had to do it again I would go to school because it would cut out so much time and so many you know fail exams but at this point it doesn't matter it's done now for assist, at least for the next two years because this certification is only good for two years and then I have to make sure I keep my CEUs up what I will say also, I'm gonna try to say it real fast, this certification counted for my CST certification. So I didn't have to retake my CST certification, the CEUs and everything that I got. Um, well, I got CEUs for passing the first assistant exam. Okay, okay guys, so I'm not gonna stay. I don't know if it's live or not. I'm not staying. I just wanted to come back and end the video. Oh, there it is. I just wanted to come back and end the video because the phone died. So I appreciate you guys for watching the video. Thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. I will catch you on the next one. Um, yeah. Hit the thumbs up for me, guys. Bye.